right, big hour. Dear Hazy B in a half an hour. Luke Wilson coming up, and he's going to have to explain to the world how it got to this point where Hazen Bro has blown past Owen Wilson. Absolutely steamrolled past them. We are red hot. We don't miss. Luke and his brethren over here, the O-Dog, cannot pick a winner to save their lives. It is do you think pathetic. they had a man conversation last night? Like, Do you think Luke FaceTimed him and said, what the hell do you think you're doing? I think it's possible Luke called Al's brother and said, you really need to check yourself. Yeah, knock it off. Because Al's Being brother is getting <laughs> very, very loud and very obnoxious now that we're winning, which I appreciate because you got to take advantage of it while you can. We've been on the wrong side of it so can many times. Can you give me the fundamentals or the gist of the I'll tweet give you that – So here, here's what happened. All right, Luke. Now the way this works, you know, whoever if you don't have the pick, you got to try to explain why the other team picked the wrong, right. made the wrong pick. But well, that's just natural. Like we we had the pick last night. You guys didn't have a say in it. You were stuck yes, with the that's Saints. Correct. I want to know what Al's brother tweeted. And so got- at the end, you know, Luke was talking about why the Saints may cover, and Al's brother clipped that and posted it online, and he tagged, Uh-oh. um, like whatever it is, cold takes exposed or old takes <laughs> oh, whatever. Like hero mode, basically eh? ice cold, like brutal commentary waiting for that account, which has like hundreds of thousands of followers to retweet it to make look Luke look bad, right? Without the context. Old takes exposed. Old takes exposed. Wow. That's what it is. Which I've been caught up in before. <laughs> People have tagged some of my stuff and they've retweeted it. Then it just blows up. It's it's actually it's kind of a rite of passage if you're on Twitter long enough. What is your worst take sports wise? I had Anyone. some takes on because I used to live tweet way more. Than, like I never tweet anymore. I just I don't have the energy to do it. It's not you know. But I, I, I there was a time like ten years ago I'd be tweeting all the time. Every Leaf game I'd be tweeting about stuff and every big event or whatever. My. <laughs> My favorite thing, though, with people who tweet a lot is they expect everybody that is, is just sitting there with you watching the game. So there's times you go through somebody's timeline and you're like, that's a penalty. What? Like, I used to do I mean? that, like, Noodles. That's a penalty. I, what, exactly, what are you talking about? Exactly what so you're you talking about. I don't understand the idea. Like, there's yeah, some exactly. great like, journalists that cover hockey. Is it a part of a journalist job, job description to, like, uh, puck drop right now. It's Stamkos versus the Cavaliers, and then it's like one nothing, and it's so and so, and then it's like bad hit for that guy. It's like, is that necessary? I don't know. Like, it's great that you do it, but who the hell is reading that? I don't well, have an answer follow. for you on that. I I do think reporters feel some sort of an obligation to, you know, offer up information and news and all that. But to your point, you know, you're you're probably on like the TSN app or something or NHL.com like you know oh they scored. or watching the game or watching the game or right. watching the game um yeah, yeah I'm a little bit uh, I don't quite understand that either you know the live play by play live tweeting is a crazy scene yeah. man it, it is. is a crazy but scene but you have to like if you end up not being on Twitter for a while and then refreshing and somebody's timeline comes up and you're just looking at it going okay what are they talking about because it's literally like a statement, you know, bad play, and you're like, okay, what play? It means like, nothing. I, nothing. And I, I would do that, Noodles. I, I would write that in. Bad dump. Like, bad dump. You have exactly. a problem? You yeah. would tweet bad dump? Well, that's a, a, maybe an egregious example. But that's the kind of thing you might tweet out, and people would be like, why would you tweet bad dump? Like, do you have so many sick? different you contexts? Problems? Do you take a bad dump? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But like, I mean, and, you know, but meanwhile, I'm maybe watching a game and it's an icing and I'm like, hey, it's a bad dump. You, you know, probably yeah, should have got dude, the line or whatever. That's an insane. That's an insane. Bad thing. dump like, you, is a brutal thing to tweet out. Well, so we, we, like, <laughs> you, their only response is get a life, man. Get a life. Right. And, and take a dump on yourself for tweeting that. Yes. It's insane like you, to, to you say Bad that. dump. Well, who put who just put in the group chat there? Joe from the bridge has got receipts for you. Oh. 
of back in the yeah, day. Yeah, there's a lot of them coming in, man. I was I'm Yankees not fan. even. Guy. Someone claiming you, they're finding that you were a Dodger fan back in the day, claiming you were a Dodger fan. <laughs> My JP, Dodgers I will not to be God, denied. JP, if you keep putting these tweets up, I'll give you a stone cold stunner <laughs> when I come back in that building. I don't want any part of old O dog yeah. tweets. Well, you you ran a poll. You ran a poll, but here's the one I like is where you're asking people like. How do I find the game? <laughs> Where's the Yankee game, people yeah. in Toronto? People in Toronto, what's changed in the Yankee yeah. game? Because I, I came like, back. <laughs> I wanted to watch the Yankees, I man. I don't that. know. But I how do you explain the Dodgers stuff? For JP and Joe from the bridge, one more of those goes up. It's My Dodgers are in tough. Bad dump. <laughs> My Dodgers. Bad dump. Bad dump. <laughs> Bad dump. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right, Luke Wilson coming up here in a moment. There it is. For Rogers, you had Rogers back in the day. That's even better. I, I, what did I? What did I tell you guys? Don't put any more up, or I'm seriously going to blow a gasket. So go we're ahead. not going to find any bad those ones. Are, yeah, those are. We only, won't find any more. Those are Someone, the ones you know what someone should do? Find where old to- takes exposed, whatever it was called. Find where I got one that was retweeted. You could. Pro- someone will find that online, and I'll bet you it was just. And it probably was accurate. It was probably a really stupid take. You know, like, some team's never going to do that. Maybe the St. Louis Blues. Worst team I've ever seen, St. Louis Blues in 2019. They and they go on the to win the Stanley Cup. That's generally what it is. Yeah. But um, there would have been some really, you know, old takes that had to be exposed recently by the bot farm because the O-Dog and Luke and all their cronies. If you smell what the Wynn Wilson is cooking. All the cronies were saying that this was a blowout. That there should be some sort of mercy rule that we'll never see the day where Hayes and Bro are back in the swing of things. And not only have we seen that day, Luke, we have blown past that stop sign. We haven't made this a competition. Now we put the pressure on you to prove that you have what it takes to keep up. What do you make of your boys, Hayes and Bro, the way we've been operating recently? Go ahead. Please pump our tires. Hayes, I'll be honest with you. The behavior of Al's brother last night is nothing short of just an absolute scumbag <laughs> scumbag decision okay i had no respect for this guy to begin with and then when he pulls a stunt like that it's personal now hayes you've awoken the beast part yeah. you said it to me yesterday i've got to sit here i'm getting too cute and this ship will be righted and when it's righted it's gonna get i mean we've taken it to the next level that's all i'm gonna say I can play in the dirt, too. If we want to play in the mud, Hayes, I will play in the mud. I cannot wait for Sunday. I cannot wait. And that's what I've got to say. All right. So you you took particular umbrage with Al's brothers since deleted tweets, right, where he he posted a comment from you that was out of context that really didn't explain why you said what you said about the Saints' opportunities last night. And uh, it was, you know, it was a little bit offside. I'll grant you that. Is that what we're talking about here? Was there a man that's conversation? Exactly, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Again, would I have taken the Saints? First off, I didn't look into the game because I'm not on it. And I said right. on the thing, in a, in a gross game like that, I am very tempted to take the points. Obviously, okay. that didn't work out. I did zero research, and the game's not my pick. It's a Thursday game. That. I understand. You can't go out here and, like you said, out of context. I also need to figure out if it was our guy Joe from the bridge or whomever, because Joe's usually on our side. How did he get that video? Clearly Doogie or someone back there is working in Al's brother's side here. It's an utterly ridiculous ordeal. It's bad karma for you, Hayes, and you're going you're gonna to pay for it because you know at the bottom of your heart that this one-point lead will be erased very soon. Okay. And when it is, yeah. when it is, it's going to get ugly now. we got to play in the mud. All right, let's play in the mud, man. We were born in the mud, right? We're Bane. You're, you're, you're Batman, and you're joining us in this in terms of where we are at and how we feel and how we're going to operate moving forward. But in terms of that game last night, where are you at with Denver and the likelihood that they can be a playoff team? Not a competitive team, not a Super Bowl-chasing team, but like last year was pretty ugly. I thought it would be pretty ugly this year for Peyton. You know, they got a lot of dead money with the Russell Wilson stuff, but they're not paying Bo Nix anything. Do you think Denver can make the playoffs? No, I do not. First and foremost, you know, the the Los Angeles in their division is still in front of them. And I know you can sit here and say, oh, well, they've won four games. They have one legit win, and it's against Tampa Bay. 
They beat the Jets 10-9 to where Bo Nix threw for 60 yards. You beat the Las Vegas Raiders, which is arguably the biggest fire sale in the NFL right now. And last night you built, beat a team that, I, mean, I don't know if you saw Richard Sherman's halftime rant, but that team would have struggled to beat a premier college program, meaning the Saints, last night. Bo Nix threw for 164. They ran the ball up and down the field. I don't see why everyone thinks Bo Nix is that special. When I watch Jaden Daniels right now, I say, I get the hype here. This kid's got it. When I watch C.J. Stroud from last year, you get the hype. He's got it. Caleb Williams, granted it was against a very bad Jaguars team, you understand why people can be very excited about Caleb Williams. I watch Bo Nix. He's missing throws left and right. Simple throws. The offense is very, very simple to a point where it, it's a borderline college-style offense. They don't have a ton of players, and I, I just don't see them winning many games against good football teams. So I, I know they're 4-2, and two, but I think that's a bit fraudulent. All right. Well, in terms of what we got cooking this weekend, I guess George Pickens um, let the cat out of the bag. Mike Tomlin was trying to keep the decision – in-house in terms in-house. of who's going to start for the Steelers. And Pickens said, you know, it's Wilson. We've been working with him. It's his first start. We talked about it yesterday and why you're in agreement with this. But in terms of the pressure and in terms of what happens if this goes south, like I'm, I'm curious where you stand on that, Luke. Like if Russ goes out there and it's it's ugly and they lose on Sunday night, do you just go right back to fields or how long do you have to commit to this guy? So it's funny you say that because that is a bit of a weird predicament. But the nice thing for Mike Tomlin is here that it's not like anyone's really going to question him based on all the success he's had. Like, I don't – some coaches, you make a decision like this and you're basically putting your job on the line. If this doesn't work out, you know, will it look a little stupid? Sure. But it's not like anyone's going to be calling for Mike Tomlin's job. This guy has been an incredible head coach and won a lot of football games with a roster that I don't think is in the past, not as much this year, and won football games with a roster that is not that good. But I really do believe that Mike Tomlin's doing this for the long run. He thinks that you know at the end of the year, and when they're in a tight game, potentially with a Baltimore or whomever, playoffs on the line – that Russell is the guy he wants pushing down the ball down the field. I think that's probably how he feels, and you got to trust him. If you're a Steelers fan, you have to trust Mike Tomlin. He's not doing this for any other reason other than he thinks it's what's best for the team. Parts, I know you've talked glowingly about your boy Aaron Rodgers, respectfully so. Good player. What is this wideout transaction Adams going to do for him and the team? Is it going to put them over the top and they can start playing like a real football team? Or are they still going to be a circus? Partsy, I'm not joking, and I would never say this for anyone else other than Aaron and a guy like Devontae, but this will put them over the top. Now, I thought the Bills answered in a great way in the division. Going and getting Amari Cooper, I would also say, is just as big an ordeal. Amari Cooper is an absolute stud. But back to Devontae, this guy, the way Aaron throws the football – the way he plays the offense, and even listening to interviews, you know, Devontae's like, hey, we're talking about signals. He loves to change things at the line of scrimmage. This is Aaron Rodgers. Devontae's going to be on the same page. I don't know if you saw this, Parsi, but the interception Aaron threw at the end of the game uh, last week, it was to Mike Williams, and it looked really, even when he threw it live, I'm like, man, did that ball slip? Like, what is going on here? After the game, Aaron Rodgers immediately threw – Mike Williams square under the bus and then ran (laughs) back the bus up and ran him over with it. And I got what he was saying. He's like, yo, Mike is supposed to be on the red line. So Aaron is trying to draw all the attention to the middle field scene. And he's waiting, trying to bring the safety in. And he was going to flip his hips and sling a deep one to Mike Williams. Mike Williams is running the wrong route. Aaron called it an inbreaker. It depends on what offense. But my point is, and I see this all the time, Aaron is that complex in the way he plays the game. I think what frustrates perhaps some of his coaches in the past, specifically LaFleur when he was in Green Bay, is that he didn't need Aaron to play the game this complex, if you will. Just run my plays and execute them, even if they're simple. Where Aaron wants to kind of, maybe this is the ego, he wants to play the game of football 
where it's just like very minute detail. I'm going to manipulate the whole defense by doing this, and then I'm going to throw an absolute laser with pinpoint accuracy to a certain spot where only my guy can catch it. But if his guys can't grasp that complexity or the concept that's going on in Aaron's head, it doesn't work. And that play is a prime example where Mike Williams is not reading what Aaron is. And Aaron then, again, that's why the ball was underthrown was because he's like, where is he going? You take a guy like Devontae Adams, who he knows and he can put into this, again, weird, complex mentality of Aaron Rodgers playing quarterback, it's going to be electric. Plus, you take a ton of heat off Garrett Wilson. you got an absolute dynamic duo here. And you, I also think he's a better one-on-one guy than what people give him credit for. So all the underneath quick stuff that Devontae Adams can do will shore up some of the offensive line issues. So I'm a firm believer that this move will push this team over the edge. Uh-oh. And the first star, Al Brother. Yes. Oh, great music to bring him in. Look at that, Al's brother. You're getting a major league theme song. You're so red it's five hot. Five in right a row, now. Hazy B. That's five in a row. That's what That's we right. do here. That's, That's right, what we man. do here. The magic bullet and the chia wow. pet behind you. I love it. I love the hat. You look victorious. You look he great. Better great apologize. Took it too yeah, far so. last yeah. night. You, 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 you cut deep and you went below the belt. <laughs> I, I will admit. I will admit that was a greasy, greasy tweet by me luke i do apologize for that one i i do sincerely apologize i i got a little bit too excited a little too overzealous it's been three years i don't know how to how to act when i'm in the lead that's right i got a little bit too rich last night I part do eight do you accept his apology absolutely not this is a war now it's week seven and we're ready to rumble <laughs> okay, okay let's so, get right, to the we'll picks get the here it's an absolute war i can't wait for sunday all right let's well, begin hey, bro Hayes, we're feeling great, Alice, brother. I mean, we feel great. Again, as I said a couple of weeks ago, I think uh, LASIK eye surgery wanted in business with us. Now Visine's reaching out. We have title sponsors coming. There's a lot happening here with Hayes and Bro. We are seeing the board so clearly. These guys are not, and they're on the clock to start the week. Jags laying five and a half. The Jaguars are a five and a half point favorite in London against the New England Patriots. Owen Wilson, you're on the clock. Bartsy, I'll be honest with you, this is a very, very gross game to pick. Yeah. Two bottom-of-the-barrel league teams here. I mean, both these teams are absolute trash. I get very worried about Jacksonville's safety coming out last week and saying, and I quote, there's a lot of quit out there. Bartsy, let me just the give you my me, two cents before you pull the trigger yes. on your pick. I think the Jags Talk beat like, I think the Jags. I agree. I like the Jags in this play. Like, New England is so trash. They cannot manufacture anything offensively. And Jacksonville, to save some kind of season and respect for themselves, might lay a thumping on these guys. Bartsy, it's funny because I was sitting here and I'm going back and forth trying to look into this. And I said, you know what? Yesterday my partner said to me, stop being cute. Let's get back to the meat and potatoes. The Jacksonville Jaguars are the meat and potatoes pick here. I'm not looking at anything else. They should cover the spread. They've been over there for a week already. They are a much better football team, even though I haven't played like it. We're rolling with the Jags, Partsy. I'm amped up. We're By noon on Sunday, we're dead even, and it's about to be a bloodbath for, for Team Hazenbot, the scumbag. <laughs> Uh, that's leadership. That's Hayes a messy hot. comment. They're calling us haze and hot these days. I, I love the word <laughs> scumbag. <laughs> it really is. Perfect. It really is. It? Yeah, it's just the it's scumbag. The oh, boy. <laughs> it stings, but it's perfect. Uh, Drake May, else, brother. I like being on Drake May. And like Luke said, man, the Jags have quit, dude. They were in Amsterdam probably all week. Yeah. They weren't even practicing. Dude, These guys Drake, stay. That's a scary Give me a team. break. What the hell has he done? He. He is setting a world record for interceptions is all he is doing. Drake Mayo Get to fine. your pick. Gerard Mayo loves London. Always has. Always will. Just like I said about Caleb Williams <laughs> last week. All right. Lions, Vikings. Vikings laying one and a half. Coming off a bye. They were over in London as well. At home against the Lions. Al's brother, Hazen Hot. Where are we at? 
Yeah, I, I, this is going to be a bit of a shootout, but I think Detroit, who've won four of the last five meetings here between the two teams, they've covered seven straight games against the Minnesota Vikings. they got the number one offense in football, and I think they're going to come out, and they're going to come out on top. That O-line is a top three pass blocking and run blocking O-line. They're super balanced, and I just ultimately think that the Vikings aren't as good as the record suggests. They've won some games, but they haven't looked great. So I think that we're going out here. The Lions, I still believe they're one of the best teams in football. Mm -hmm. They're going to play inspired after Aiden Hutchinson's injury. And this is a this is this could be a divisional game on the line here. I mean, you lose this one if you're Detroit, you're falling back two games to Minnesota. Dan Campbell is going to have that group ready to rock, ready to bite some kneecaps. I love the Lions and the points here. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you on this again. They, they both had their bye early in the season. Minnesota coming off theirs, which, you know, it scares me a little bit. Coming off a bye, they're at home. But I'm with you. Like, this Vikings team has been good. I don't believe they're great. 6-0 and start, and I think this is a, a big opportunity for Detroit coming off the Hutchinson injury, which over time will hurt them. Like, undoubtedly, that's going to hurt them. Yeah. But I think you play on emotion. You, you, I think Dan Campbell is going to have this team fired up. And I think Brian Flores, very good D.C. We've talked about him a lot this year. I think it's a different beast, this Lions offense right now. They're a well-oiled machine. It's effectively a pick em. I think Detroit wins the game, so hence Hazen Hot thinks that they'll cover because we're getting plus points. We'll take the Lions plus one and a half. All right. Yes. Love so, it. I will say a couple things here, Partsy. I'll be honest, this is our pick. I'm taking the Vikings. Nobody owns Aaron Glenn more than Kevin O'Connell. I talked about this yesterday. Nick Mullins threw for 400 against these guys. What is Sam Darnold going to do? Might, he might throw for 500. We'll see. Also, Jefferson's ripping. Addison's back. Aiden Hutchinson is obviously not playing. You're coming off a bye. Part C at, at 4 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern Standard in the Time. Lead. We're in back the in the lead. Yeah. We're back in the lead. I can't wait. Part C, I'm right. saluting you as we speak, Parts. <laughs> All right. Then let's get I'd to also, the 4 p.m. window. Go ahead, There's Al's some brother. PG here, but perhaps Al's brother can let everyone know what 5-0 and teams coming off a of bye are in the history of the NFL. Go do that homework tonight, Al's brother, and find out some PG you might have missed. Uh -oh. Anyway, are you uh -oh. saying that because you got a stat one, to throw out on your uh -oh. next pick? Is that why you know that stat, Luke? What's the stat? What's well, the stat? Did you forget that one? I don't What's know, the man. stat? I don't know. The Chiefs are coming <laughs> off a bye, are they not? They're 5-0 and going into the game in the 4 p.m. window. Niners, though, are somehow favored in this game. Do I have that right Ooh. on FanDuel? Yeah. Niners are minus one and a half against they are. the Chiefs. Um, go ahead, Luke Wilson, Owen so, Wilson. You guys Marty, are on the this clock. This is another very, very tough game for us to call here. I'm back and forth. I'm back and forth. And to be honest with you, I, I don't know where I'm landing. I can be swayed. But right now I'm leaning towards the San Francisco 49ers. Wow. My thought process wow. was very, very simple here. You're, I remember when we lost to the Patriots, the next year we played them in – New England, and it was one of those things where as much as, you know, it's not the same as the Super Bowl, you still just, you circled the game, you were ready to rumble, and watching film, it's a lot easier to prep for a team that you lost for prior, you know, somewhat recently, than it is a team that you beat. That's just the way of the NFL. Big so picture think thinking, no parts he has it. I think big picture thinking, like if you're just looking at it from the big picture, you'd be thinking the Giants have not, or the 49ers have not impressed this year, and the Chiefs are the Chiefs. So how could you possibly be thinking this? Do you know what I'm saying? That would be my only comeback where it's like, how do you get to that decision based on what we've seen this year? And I know you're talking about this individual game upcoming. Yes. I mean, my biggest thing here would be, the Chiefs have looked good early, I would say, but, you know, the Falcons they beat by five, the Chargers they beat by seven, and as we see, the New Orleans Saints are the biggest joke in the NFL. That's their last win. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of San Fran here has been them shooting themselves in the foot, not necessarily teams beating them. Look at the Rams game and really the Cardinals game, which we got jammed up on earlier in the year, was a 10-point win for them all day. So I think that the Niners – Come out here. They also need this game a lot more to keep kind of pace in the division. They're 3-3. Three and three. This is a get-right game for them. I think the Niners get the job done. I really do. 
All right, man. I'll tell you what. Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes coming off a bye. But, Al's brother Marcy, and getting If you points. want to go over the top here, I won't be mad at you. Oh, I won't be man. mad at you. Andy Reid off a of bye getting points is absurd. Twenty-one and four. He's yeah, twenty-one and four I in his career that. coming off a of bye. No, no we're a team and we're pro athletes and we just know more. Salute parts. <laughs> we're riding with the Niners. All right, you guys are on the Niners. So the Immaculate Week <laughs> is still it. alive here, Al's brother. I love it. Oh, <laughs> the Immaculate Week is alive after a win last night because they just handed us. Imagine still betting against Mahomes. Imagine they're in that. mental pretzel haze. Getting that points. mental pretzel. Yeah. Yes. They're they're really in a bad place, man. They're in a dark <gasps> place. Brock, Brock Purdy is out statistically out for Mahomes oh, in every stop category. It. Stop it, though. Uh, you, you get This is the problem, Luke. When it comes to Brock Purdy and Aaron Rodgers, you just you get locked in and you can't get away from it, man. And I'll we take will Mahomes. See. We will see. We will see. I, we will I'm see. I'm concerned to betting against Mahomes. Yes. And you read off of buy noodles. The guy is a machine. I, I machine. am concerned about it, but I I will say this. I have a feeling now that it's like kind of deadlocked. You guys are up one. Like we've got a game here. Like we've yes, got we now right. we've got a, a, a and I think there's going to be lead changes here. I, I do believe there's going to be lead changes at the possible. The, the it's doubtful, but might possible. Be lead, we we called it week one. We weekend. said we're going to rope it dope. We're going to let them get off to a good start, and then we'll take off. And that's <laughs> precisely what's happened here as we get to the Sunday nighter. Jets, Steelers, Jets Oof. laying one and a half on the road. The two and four New York Jets are a one and a half point favorite in Pittsburgh, Sunday night football against the four and two Steelers Just with take Russell the Steelers Wilson. Al's brother, the Steelers. where are you at? I'm curious where you're at with this one, Hazy B, because it's a bit of a weird line for me. I've got a little lean towards one way, but I'm curious where you're at. Here's – I hate the Jets with a passion. I really do. I think they stink. <laughs> I, I don't think the coaching change in Devontae Adams is going to get them into the playoffs or have them win the division. But do I think they're a 2-5 and five football team? You know, like when when you just take a step back, this is effectively a pick 'em. Do I think they're two and five? Yeah. I I don't think they're two and five, and and conversely, I don't think the Steelers are five and two. And I wonder about this Russell Wilson, you know, experiment that they're going through here. It's almost like Tomlin's throwing one on Sunday night, and they're just going to test run this and see where it goes and try to build as the future goes on. I I can't believe I'm saying this. Maybe it's because I'm seeing the board so clearly, haze and hot, but I'm leaning <laughs> Jets. Like leaning Jets here. Is that crazy, Al's brother, or what? No, because that was the same lean that I had. So yeah. I'm glad you're oh, looking the same way. I'm so happy, Hazy B. Look, on paper, I like the Jets roster a heck of a lot better than I do the Steelers. Like Mike Tomlin on the road against a cir- circus act Jets team on a short week with a mystery box quarterback, yes, that does give me a little bit of pause. But ultimately, the Jets' issues have been offensively and with penalties. They clean up the penalties after that gong show we saw on Monday night. Mm-hmm. That defense has been great. I I can just see Aaron Rodgers having an absolutely stud performance this weekend purely out of pettiness. Like, mm-hmm. if there's anyone in the world who could do that, it's Aaron Rodgers. Just flip the switch. He got his coach fired. He got his way there. And he finally got his boy, Devontae Adams, to New York. Now he's got everything he thinks he needs. He should really be really looking to dominate this game and say, see, guys, I told you so. Yep. Now we're set, and let's go crush the Steelers. Here's another thing. Greg the leg, he's showing up on Sunday night. Greg the <laughs> leg <laughs> is showing up on Sunday night. So? Zerline's not <laughs> – Doinking anything in Pittsburgh. Not going to happen. All right, we're on the Jets. Lock it in. We're taking the New York Jets. All right, there the picks are in, and I'm curious how people are going to respond to this. Owen Wilson and their bot farm, they're going to start coming alive, I'm sure. But uh, Partsy, we're in good we're shape here, Partsy. We'll be 3-1 and one plus 2 here. Okay. I'm, I'm we'll totally confident shape. in that. I, 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 like, that's yeah, just the way – it's like that loser Oof. team that has some success, and then all of a sudden they get cocky and they're just crap again in a week. And everyone's like, <laughs> I told you guys you were crap, and yet that's exactly what's going to happen. All right. Well, you, you guys are the Eagles. You guys are the Eagles. You were so good, and then it just went wrong. It went south, and it's continuing to go south that's for you right. guys. Taking the Niners is just absolutely asinine. It Bro, is you're an the insane Saints. move. Hayes and Bot are the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're, if we, we are, we're two the, Saints, not, the, not today's Saints. Exactly. We're the Drew Brees and Sean Payton Saints. <laughs> that might be true. All right, yes. boys. Best of luck. We'll catch you guys on the group chat 
early and often Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, can't wait, fellas. See you, boys. Cheers. There's Luke Wilson and Al's brother. Al's brother, one half of Hayes and Hot. Hayes and Hot. That's what they're <laughs> calling us online. Hayes and Hot. Hayes wow. and Hot. That's tough. That's what we're being called. I, I mean, you got to ask the people. All right, uh, best bets still to come. we got Dear Hazy B coming up. Mail it in Fridays. Brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. From tip-offs to tie bites and puck drops to pizza, BP's elite lineup of apps, wings, and ice cold beers always dialed in for game time. Hustle into your local BP tonight. Dear Hazy B next. Insight, the ability to see and understand why you do the things you do. Dear Hazy B. We're going to go down there and have a donkey barbecue, and I'm going to furnish the ass, right? You don't want to hide a Mars bar in your sleeping bag when there's a bear outside the tent. Once again, wouldn't be shocked if we end up in a magazine article helping people. Toronto life or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be great. Simple stuff. Send us your problems. We help you. Noodles, you're a dinner guy. You know the routine. You've been doing it your whole life. Hazy B, you have thoughts on this as well. Okay. Dear Hazy B, going to the Maple Leafs game on Saturday night with three other buddies, and we all have different jobs and make different money. We're going to a nice steak joint downtown before the game, and one of my buddies with tons of money always wants to play credit card roulette. He'll be ordering crazy bottles of wine, appies, and decked out steak. If my card gets pulled, I'm in a big pinch. How do I handle this? Okay, so I'm hoping that I'm hoping that the guy with lots of money just enjoys the thrill of the game that if if even if somebody else loses, he goes, I got it. I got you. You know, like that's what I'm hoping because I've been Oh, you've probably been at the same meals where you've been out with guys who make, you know, lots and lots of money and you're on the short end of the stick and it's like they reach over and go, I got it anyways. Because I've, I've played the credit card games where it's like, oh, it's you know, the a bills, tough game. Man. Yeah, the bills are four grand and you're like, nah, yeah. I, you know, I, and, and some of the wealthier guys will just grab it. I'm hoping that's the case. If not, you almost got to be honest, because if you're on that, the lower, you know, if you're not making the money that your buddies are, it, it puts you in a tough spot. And I would hope that they're friends enough with you that they, they would just chop it four ways or whatever mm-hmm. and go, hey, guys, like split the bill. It's all good. That's something, yeah, I think you can just, Hazy, you can chime in, but you just get it out of the way as soon as you get there. Say, guys, I'm not going overboard. I can't afford the credit card game, so we're just chopping this up and we'll, we'll do whatever. But I don't have the cake that you guys do. So yeah. if you guys want to chunk in for me, Help me out. Go ahead, but I, I'm not. I'm not playing this game. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I think that's the play. That said, there is a gambling element to this, where <laughs> if your car doesn't come off, <laughs> you're home free with a great meal, right? Like that's the risk when you play credit card roulette. If you're not familiar with the game, there's two ways to play it. Either everyone throws their card in, and whoever the first card that gets pulled, that's the one that goes down. Or you pull until there's one left, and that's, that's even what it is. that's heart wrenching, man. When your card's still in there and it's like a table for 12 and you're down yeah. to three guys, you're like, this bill is going to be five grand. I'm in big trouble. Yes. You know, like, or whatever it is. I've been in that spot. It's it's tough. Yeah, I think you either address it immediately or you. I guess you got to gam- – I mean, I don't know how much of a gambler this guy is, but it is a great feeling when your card <laughs> is Dude, not When involved. you get it back first. Oh, it's just amazing. Like- you just you you order stuff, you right? Order you get stuff. cocky. You can yeah, start calling all over, and be like, you know, like espressos around the house. Yeah. You know, let's just make martinis. Just make sure everyone's <laughs> in a good spirit, because then you can really get greasy. You know what I've heard of too, which is a greasy move, is you know guys will do this game and then they're using like a corporate card, and you're like, you're not even paying. Like it's yeah. the company's yeah, paying. You gotta have skin paying. in the game. That's I gutless. told you guys one yeah. of the greasiest things I've seen. Is Captain Ron Francis was pretty diligent looking through the bill to make sure the restaurant wasn't dinging us. Found a gigantic bottle of wine, and one of the veteran <laughs> players was getting it shipped to his house on the rookies. And, and was, Which is so not, gutless. Oh. It did not go over well, man. 
Yeah. He just went up to who he was like it was uncomfortable. He was like, Who ordered this magnum of Opus One sent to their house? <laughs> a magnum of Opus <laughs> One. Magnum that of Opus so One. Godless. Yeah. That is so gutless. That's thousands of dollars. Well, yeah. Thousands of dollars plus shipping, and it's just like why would anybody do that? So anyway. greasy. Dear Hazy B, my buddy has a Nashville bachelor party planned. Six of us are going. The boys want to drive. Hmm. It's over 12 hours to get down there. Is it a greasy move if I book a flight and tell them I'll meet them there? Don't know if I can do the 12 hours. <laughs> Absolutely in the car. not. It's a veteran move, and you do it, man. That's my stance. Noodles, if you disagree, go ahead. Chime no, in I don't disagree, but I read this today and I laughed. But I've got a take on this, and, and tell me if. if if this might be, it might be the best of both worlds. Book a flight home. Book a one yes. way. Because the no, way dude. down, everyone's yes, jacked right. up. Like, everyone's jacked up. You're going to probably stop on the way. You know, it's laughs. It's joking around. I know it's the mm-hmm. fart car and guys are acting up and, you know, you got to stop. Like, but to me, the way down is a bunch of fun. The way home, you that's the worst drive ever after a big weekend. Worst. That's Noodles. a one. That's an hour flight, hour and a half. You fly home, but on the way down, jump in with the Great boys call. and have some fun. I love that call. No, I love that. You call. guys think the drive down there is going to be this fun thing? I don't know how old this dude is. If you're 19 and 20, you could drive across the country and think it's funny. Because you're driving on 15-hour shifts. You're laughing, joking, radio, tunes, farts, darts, all of it. This would last for one hour if you're 25 years or older. One hour, you'd be like, I wish I flew. Fly yeah, there and fly home. Let me Make up an excuse. Picture. Let me paint a picture, though. Knowing my friends and my idiot buddies back home, like, it doesn't take 12 hours. It might take a day or more to get there because you stop in Niagara for a couple. Well, you know, you stop in. Like I'm saying, happens. this road trip. Lundy's Lane. Right. That's before what I'm the saying. It's hits. a lunch. It's a lunch there, couple. Because only the the guy driving is the only guy you got to really worry Dude, about. Everybody you else. You pull is, into the downer. You're not leaving there for four. That's you what don't I'm even saying. Get to Nashville. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna miss out on that fun because there will yeah. be somewhere along the way is a slight pit stop that. In, yeah. involves some fun. So yeah. that's where you don't want to miss You get out. guys that walk next door, you're there locked and loaded for 40 hours in that place. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> probably true. Nashville may yeah. never actually be reached. But I exactly. like the way you're thinking. The way down is a blast. Everyone's having a great time. It's like the flight to and from Vegas. The flight yeah. down, people are laughing, talking. Hey, how's it going? Where are you staying? No, the flight yeah. back is the most miserable experience. On silence. Earth. Just and silence. you have to be on that plane. I think it's a great call. We got a problem from Chrissy that I think is fairly common. And it's very simple. You got to make a call. Dear Hazy B, I want to throw a men's baseball team end of the year party on UFC 309. But my wife booked me to go to a surprise birthday party for a person I don't even know. How do I get out of the surprise party? CB 27. Shout out to the Stony Creek Snipers. Okay, yeah, shout out. Stony Creek Snipers, that's a great name. So UFC 309, that's a big one. John Jones, middle of November. Um, 309, I went to UFC 100. 100, I know, man. I I remember that's going crazy. to them in the 70s or 80s, I want to say. Yeah. Um, Jones versus, uh, who's he fight? I can't see here. Anyway, it's a, it looks like it's a great card. It's in New York. It's at MSG. Not that you're going. You're trying to host a party here. But oh, you're, um, going. you're going. I think <laughs> I think you just have to be honest. Like we were talking about earlier with the credit card stuff. If it's someone that you don't know. Why do, why do you have to be there if you don't know the person? Exactly. Screw it. Don't go. Exactly. And especially yeah. if you're in marriage. It's like, listen, the reality is early in a relationship, it's kind of like, hey, we want to be together. Not that you don't want to be with your significant other forever. But the point is, if you're going to be married and living together for decades, you're going to have separate lives at times. There's going to yeah. be things that pop up. You go here. I'm going to go here. That's just a reality. Like that. That's, I think, healthy in every relationship. And I think this is a perfect example of that. You go to the surprise party. Maybe you bring a friend. I'm going to host the boys. We're going to have our UFC party. And everyone's going to be happy. I think she'll be very reasonable with that. Yeah. I think you just got to be honest. Say, hey, listen, I've already the wheels are in motion on a Stony Creek Clippers party or whatever the hell the name was, and 
This is the way it's going to go. Yeah, One of the biggest forthright. problems in life now is people just can't handle, like, the truth. It's just everything just offends them. It's like, no, it doesn't. you got to simply say, I don't know the person. Therefore, I'm going to be attending the UFC with my buddies. Very simple. Perfect. Buddy, the person doesn't care if I'm there or not, so who's going to miss me? Do you just want me to be there so you can say, oh, this is my dude, and then ignore me the whole night? I'm not going. Well, not going. I mean, sometimes it's that maybe she doesn't know a lot of people there, and you got to be there for the buffer. Because then, both be some... then both that, cancel. Then both cancel. And if that's, <laughs> the rea- if that's the truth, if you don't really know anybody, why would you be at the surprise party anyway? No yeah. kidding. I, one I more agree. travel one. One more travel one. Dear Hazy B, we are going to Green Bay for the game. Ooh. Our friend lives about an hour outside of town and won't sleep over to save us waiting for him to leave because of a digestion issue. He says he needs his routine or by 5 a.m. he'll be backed up like the 401. What do we do? <laughs> what? So this guy so is living an a... hour outside of Green Bay. And he They're has, going he, to the game in Green Bay, but yeah. they want him to come and sleep over so there's no transition time in the morning. They right. just want to get out. But this cat is claiming he needs time in the morning to do his routine. Well, does not want to go. I hate to break it to you, but there's nothing you can do to get this guy to change his routine. Like, there's just yeah. nothing you can do. You tell him where you're going to tailgate. You know, they're playing Houston. It's a massive game, I'm presuming, is this weekend. What a ball game that's going to be. Uh, it's probably a 12 o'clock local start. You tell them, listen, by 9.30 local, 9 a.m. local, whenever you want to get there, I'll be there. My would, my guess would be this guy will surprise you, and he'll be there first. He'll take care of whatever he's got to take care of. He's a local. Sounds like he's from Wisconsin. Don't Don't sell this guy short. Don't judge a book by its digestive cover. This guy will get his job done, and he'll be at the ball game and ready to rock on Sunday. That is the kind of line that makes this an award-winning segment. His digestive what? Cover. Cover. Yeah. Yes. Do not. Don't judge him by the judge digestive cover. Judge him by his digestive cover. cover. He'll be fine. I think you just tell him, you sleep, you sleep wherever you want, but you the do train's whatever you want. leaving. No, the train's leaving at a certain time, and if you're That's not fine. on it, we're gone. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. If he's an hour outside of Lambo, he can get there by himself. That's what he's telling you. He's like, "Don't worry about me, guys. You're you're not you're you're the ones who are traveling here." You I don't know are... where these guys are from. They might be from Ontario, but the bottom line is, when the bus leaves, out he'll be says, there. He'll yeah. be there. I guarantee it. Yeah. With coffees, possibly with whiskey in them, he will be ready to rock. A I have full faith in this facts guy. and are with whiskey in it. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's precisely what I'm telling you. <laughs> Watch Doogie yourself. knows all about that one. Yes, he does. All right, there you go. Dear Hacey B, very successful. Again, I think very helpful, I hope. I mean, my impression is that a yeah, lot of people appreciate stuff. the kind of help that we supply. And we'll continue to do that as long as we can. We're uh, just Melody. like the coaches, man. We're giving it to people. you got to go out in the ice and do it. That's right. All we can do is give you the ice, right? That's we can, it. You can drag a horse to water. You can't force it to drink it, man. And I, I hope they will drink it, but all we can do is get it there. Mail it in Fridays, brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. From tip-offs to tie bites and puck drops to pizza, BP's elite lineup of apps, wings, and ice cold beers always dialed in for game time. Hustle into your local BP tonight. What a night. It might be on a patio night for, for Boston Pizza, man. Amazing, man. Well, beautiful, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. So beautiful. It's supposed to be great all weekend, too. What a weekend to maybe hit a Boston pizza patio for the last time all year. All right, we'll come back with our best bets. Recap a busy afternoon. Look ahead to a busy weekend. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, today's best bets are powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble a same-game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Packers land two and a half at home to Houston. I like where they're at. That guy's going there, and he's waiting for his buddy who's got issues in the morning. They'll be there at Lambeau Field. And I know Houston's 5-1. and one. They're a good team. I like where the Packers at. I like that you're only laying two and a half. I think they win, and I think they could win by a touchdown or more. I like the Falcons at home laying three against Seattle. Seattle hasn't been great. they got to go across the country as well. That line is a little bit sneaky. I'm not sure why it's higher, but I'll jump on it. I like the Falcons. And, again, like we said with Hayes and Hot earlier this week, or earlier this hour, Jets laying one and a half. Um 
I'll take it. Aaron Rodgers, I just don't see them starting two and five. I think they're going to get that new coach a win. I think they'll get past the Steelers. I think it could be a close game, but it's only one and a half. It's basically a pick em. So if the Jets win, I think they cover. There's my parlay. And uh, it's paying big plus money, plus 573. Today's best bets powered by FanDuel. FanDuel is the home for popular parlays this NFL season. Please play responsibly. 19 plus physically located in Ontario. All right, at least Rangers tomorrow night. What are we thinking? Big test. Big, Big test. test. Yeah, it's a good they test. Got, they got Rangers tomorrow night and then Tampa Monday night. It's That's a real deal couple it's games. A big, it's been it's a, a nice story. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's just like, let's see what you got. Big boy hockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah, got a lot of hockey coming up. Columbus Tuesday, St. Louis Thursday. Uh, then they got Boston, I think, Winnipeg. They yeah, got, they got some. A yeah, lot five, of games. The next five or seven games, like there's some. There's some good teams in there. So yep. you, you level up against them, see how you – Let's yeah, see what you got. They've had a up. nice, easy start. A lot of home games, right? They only went spaced to Montreal out. opening night. Yeah, spaced out. Now yep. now the season's going to really start kicking off. Exactly. So we'll see what the Leafs have in store. All right, thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it. Everyone for tuning in today. TV, radio, podcast, web, we appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy your weekends. We're back Monday at – Back to reality for Hazenbot this weekend. 4 p.m. We'll chat then. <laughs>